and welcome back to the Fast Forward Sailing News Show. Today we have news from the America's Cup, Sail GP, and from the world of Olympic sailing. Now going forwards with these videos that I do on multiple sailing events, I'm going to try and split them up into different sections. So we have a section on the America's Cup, a section on Sail GP, and a section on anything else. So if, say for instance, the America's Cup is not your cup of tea, you can just skip to, for instance, the Sail GP section. So you should see on the video progress bar, there should be sections of a video which each have a title and you can select whichever one you want to see. Obviously it helps me and the YouTube channel if you watch the whole thing, but I realise some of you are busy and that's why I've added this in so you can easily skip to the news you want. Ironically, considering the channel name, you don't do this by fast forwarding. Perhaps I should petition YouTube for a fast forward setting. So before we get into the sailing news, if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to the channel for your weekly dose of sailing news. And if you're already subscribed, let's get this video out to more sailing fans by hitting the thumbs up button below. With that said, on to the news. So here we have an article from Sailing World. New York Yacht Club submits challenge for the 37th America's Cup. Quickly for those of you who don't know, all America's Cup teams have a yacht club behind them. And the New York Yacht Club is the yacht club behind the American Magic America's Cup Challenge. So the article reads that on Thursday, the 6th of May, the New York Yacht Club submitted a challenge for the 37th America's Cup. The challenge was accompanied by a draft protocol for the regatta, which would see the cup take place in New Zealand during early 2024, utilising the AC-75 class. It seems that all the America's Cup teams are united on the issue of which class to use, but not necessarily the date and location of the Cup. So there's been suggestions that the next America's Cup might take place outside of New Zealand. This hasn't been received particularly well amongst most sailing fans, and certainly not by the other two challenges from the last America's Cup, namely American Magic and Luna Rossa Prada. And this might be why the Americans have specified a location and date for the next America's Cup. Maybe in a preemptive attempt to stop the next cup happening next year offshore and possibly between only Team New Zealand and Team UK. I'd be interested in getting your thoughts on this. Which proposal do you like best? Do you want the next cup to happen in New Zealand a little way off in 2024? Or do you want to have it earlier and possibly hosted outside of New Zealand? Now you may be in the camp that this American Magic Challenge seems eminently reasonable. However, going on to the next article now, the Defender... Team New Zealand have rebuffed the New York Yacht Club's surprise challenge. And it's interesting they mention this as a surprise and we'll find out why that is when we read on. So the cup holders, Team New Zealand, issued a statement two hours after the release of the challenge from American Magic. The statement reads that Team New Zealand, as the current defender of the America's Cup, welcome the New York Yacht Club's interest in the next America's Cup, but question their motives for such a presumptuous statement where entries do not open for some time. So that's why it's been called a surprise challenge, because it's before the date uh, when entries are open. So I don't think this is a simple mess up from American Magic. I think they put this challenge in early for tactical reasons. And the obvious assumption is that they're worried about what Team New Zealand and Team UK could be planning. There have been some valid points raised by NYYC, New York Yacht Club, a number of which are already being considered in developing a progressive and forward-thinking protocol between the Defender and INEOS Team UK, who are the two parties responsible for developing the next protocol. Is it just me or does that read really a slightly bitchy? Sort of like telling American Magic to mind their own business. Perhaps it's just me. So the Royal Yacht Squadron behind Ben Ainsley's INEOS team also released a statement. They said, as the challenger of record for the 37th America's Cup, we are working collaboratively with the Royal New Zealand Yacht Squadron and Team New Zealand to write the protocol that will define the rules moving forward. Reading more positively than Team New Zealand's statement, they also go on to say that we are delighted to hear the New York Yacht Club are interested in continuing participation in the America's Cup and we will keep them informed as we move forward. Going on, TV New Zealand reports that the New York Yacht Club move is expected to be matched with support from longtime America's Cup challenger Luna Rossa who are guaranteed the hosting for the 38th America's Cup under the deal. And the 38th America's Cup, for those who don't know, is the cup after the next one. So let's have a look at the proposal from the New York Yacht Club. It says they have serious concerns about the future of this great competition, the cost of the competitive campaign, the lack of continuity in the class, 
and the inability to plan beyond the current cycle have combined to create a prohibitive barrier to entry, which has manifested in dwindling number of challenges and public interest. While we await further details on the location, timing and conditions for the 37th America's Cup, we want to emphatically signal our enthusiasm for a multi-challenger event in 2024. Interestingly again, they specifically mention multi-challenger, as if they're scared of the alternative. So just going over a few things from that statement, dwindling number of challengers, there is some truth to that. The Cup in 2007 had 11 challenger teams and it dropped to three in 2013, but it did pick up to five challengers in 2017. Now let's quickly fact check whether there's been dwindling interest in the America's Cup from fans. So I'm going to head to a cool little tool called Google Trends and we're going to put in the search box America's Cup and this gives you a good indication of interest in any particular topic over time basing it on the number of Google searches so not perfect but a pretty interesting tool so I've had it on United Kingdom so I'm going to go worldwide and um, it's automatically past 12 months so we're going to go 2004 to present and we can see the big problem the America's Cup has is it only happens every few years so there's a huge uh, peak of interest every few years and then a massive drop to near zero. But that's beside the point. Let's look at whether interest is declining. Uh, so it looks like the most interest we had was for the 2013 America's Cup, which strangely was the one with the fewest challenges. And ever since, interest has dwindled. And interestingly, the Americans are correct. The most recent America's Cup had the least fan interest of any America's Cup since uh, Google was founded. Lots of things have improved about the America's Cup, but clearly we are losing fans at a time when we should be gaining fans as the sport becomes more exciting. So my question to you is, why do you think the America's Cup is losing interest from fans and what can be done about it? So the American Magic team think they have uh, some solutions. They are suggesting a multi-event schedule, time and location for the next four America's Cup regattas, which will enable teams, corporate partners and media to plan in advance, think beyond single campaigns and maximise revenue opportunities. Now obviously this is quite radical, but there is a lot of sense to what they say and it would fit in with a commitment of keeping the AC75 class for the next few cycles. So it looks like the Americans want pre-scheduled time and location of each event, including the America's Cup itself. So presumably they're proposing that we would move away from having the cup in the nation of the winner. So although they're supportive of New Zealand having the next America's Cup in New Zealand, they want the next three America's Cups to be hosted in different venues. And this might help spread the appeal of the cup worldwide and reach a new fan base. Their proposal would also help new teams come along and actually become competitive eventually. It's very hard to become competitive in your first America's Cup unless you've got an awful lot of money and then a bit of luck. So I know from experience when planning for Olympic campaigns, which are similar in some ways, that effectively when you're starting your campaign, you're not campaigning for the next Olympics in four years. You're really campaigning for the Olympics after that in eight years time. To me, their proposal makes a lot of sense. But it is quite radical and perhaps it's moving too far away from what the America's Cup is supposed to be. Let me know what you think in the comments below. So moving on to the next news story. The Fingal Cup in Portugal has finished and it's been won by New Zealander Andy Maloney. The article reads, it took 63 years for New Zealand to win its first Fingal Cup in 2019. And that was won by Josh Jr. This year it's been won by another New Zealander, Andy Maloney, who led the event since day one, where he lost the lead briefly during the final three races today. He just did enough to grasp victory. So it seems that the thin class that has long been dominated by the Brits is now entering a period of dominance for New Zealanders. However, unfortunately that's probably going to be cut short, as many sailors will abandon the class, as it likely won't be used as an Olympic class after 2021. So reading on in the article, 2019 champion Josh Jr. from New Zealand took the bronze. Here are the top 10. Interestingly, Brit Giles Scott found himself down in ninth. He won the gold medal last Olympics. So he'll be hoping to turn around fortunes in time for the next games. 
So just a quick interlude. If you're enjoying the video so far, don't forget to give it a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I'd really appreciate it. So moving on to the next news story. World Sailing would have gone into liquidation without an International Olympic Committee loan. So I've never really been sure what liquidation means and, uh, and the difference between liquidation and bankruptcy and insolvency. So looking it up, it says liquidation has its disadvantages. Uh, the business will no longer be able to trade and will likely be restricted from using the same or similar company name again in the future. Any employees will lose their jobs and so will the directors. So really liquidation is not a good thing. If World Sailing had uh, gone into liquidation, there would be no more World Sailing. World Sailing's chief executive, David Graham, admitted the Embattled Federation would have gone into liquidation without financial assistance provided by the IOC following the postponement of the Tokyo 2020 Olympic Games. So it looks like that although World Sailing perhaps wasn't particularly well managed financially, um, it was the pandemic which would have pushed them over the edge if the International Olympic Committee hadn't assisted them. World Sailing is thought to have received a loan of around $3.1 million as part of the IOC support package. It looks like World Sailing were depending on Tokyo 2020 happening on schedule. So that kind of demonstrates the financial difficulty that World Sailing is in and has been in in the past. The article reads that this admission from Graham marks the first time a senior official at World Sailing has openly revealed the perilous state of its finances. Graham said World Sailing was unhealthily subordinate to the IOC as it is heavily reliant on the income from the Olympic Games that it receives at the end of each four-year cycle. So personally, I don't think this dependence on the Olympic Games is very healthy for sports governing bodies. Having not been a part of one myself, I can't really comment on whether it's feasible to um, draw good income from elsewhere. Uh, but I'd be interested in hearing your thoughts. Do you think that world sailing should be hinged to the Olympic Games? Moving on, Graham says that he was hopeful financial stability could be achieved by 2024. World sailing have stripped right back and had enjoyed a good first quarter of 2021. It will be interesting to see whether we see the effects of world sailing cutting costs. Graham goes on to say that the world sailing had not reaped the rewards of prioritising the Olympics at the expense of other areas of our sport. The majority of the Federation's resources are spent on admin, headcount, office space and only a fraction on promotion and development of the sport. Ideally, promotion and development of the sport is what world sailing is there for, so we should be investing in those areas and reducing costs in admin, headcount, office space, etc. Graham began his report by warning there are many areas which, where world sailing was in disorder. Interestingly, he attacks the increased divisive politics within world sailing, claiming he has been amazed at the low levels some people will go to. There are no penalties for causing disruption, and all of these things bring our sport into disrepute. Internal disputes are dramatically increasing world sailing's legal costs. There is also a big dispute over a bronze medal at the 2012 Olympics, which went to the International Court of Sport, I believe, and cost the International Disabled Fed Sailing Federation quite a bit of money. And in doing so, also cost world sailing quite a bit of money. And I think you'd be pretty amazed at how much world sailing have spent on legal costs in the last 10 years. It is clear we need reform, Graham said, and I'd certainly agree with that. Right, so to finish off, we got some Sail GP news. First up, we've got confirmation that Ben Ainsley broke the speed record for the F50 class at the last Sail GP event in Bermuda. Sail GP organisers are crediting their new wing sail for helping Sir Ben Ainsley smash their speed record. Figures from the opening regatta have been released showing Ainsley's British boat hit 94.8 km per hour. I know there's quite a lot of sailing fans out there who won't be best pleased with the use of kilometers per hour in that speed measurement. And for those of you who are in that camp, that translates to just over 51 knots. And that's not an insignificant jump from a record set by Tom Slingsby's Australian team in 2019 of 92.6 kilometers per hour. Interestingly, they achieved their speed record in a bearer way round in the first mark after blasting across a short opening reach. So unlike in the America's Cup, Sail GP starts are on a reach and that gives the boats an opportunity to get up to very fast speeds and it looks like when you bear away from that reach a bit, that's when they're reaching maximum speeds. Interestingly, it was also the British boat that won the event 
so that suggests that speed might have had something to do with their dramatic comeback on day two. Interestingly, the France Cell GP team, who also had a great regatta, moved up to second on the speed rankings with 93.5 km per hour. To compare speeds with the America's Cup AC75 class, they reached 98.73 km per hour, which I believe is 53.3 knots, but they seem to even want to put kilometers per hour where there should be knots. And going back to the American Magic speed record, it's interesting that it was American Magic, and it shows what a shame it was that we lost them from the regatta in that cap size, because that boat might have been the best boat to challenge Team New Zealand based on speed. Interestingly, it wasn't Team New Zealand who broke that record, potentially because the America's Cup was raced in lighter conditions than the Prada Cup. So, last story here, Sail GP again. The next Sail GP event will be raced in Taranto, Italy on June the 5th to June 6th. Taranto was founded by the Spartans and with over 3,000 years of history stands between two bodies of water and is known as the City of Two Seas. The unique natural harbour will provide a perfect setting for the adrenaline-filled racing in front of a backdrop that marries the old and new of southern Italy. So if you can get yourselves down there, it sounds like it's going to be a pretty awesome event. For this season and going forward, SailGP are trying to be a climate-positive event. So I believe their boast is that they're the only sporting event which has a negative carbon footprint, which is pretty impressive and I'm not exactly sure how they get to that but it's certainly helpful that the boats are powered by wind power. Apparently, Sail GP fans who purchase tickets contribute €1.50 from each ticket to contribute to a UN renewable energy project. So if you want an excuse to go watch some sailing and uh, do something good for the environment, then why not go and watch some Sail GP? Though having said that, I'm sure that all the flying of fans to the event probably means that the event isn't ultimately carbon neutral. So that's the sailing news for this week. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Lots to discuss here. It's certainly an interesting time for the future of our sport. If you like the video and you like this sort of format, if you can leave a thumbs up to let me know, that would be awesome. It also helps these videos reach a broader audience and it literally takes one second to do. So if you're up for supporting the channel, leave a thumbs up and I'll see you in the next video.